CataractCoach.com, Iowa Calc, case study number eight, learning from the first eye. First eye ended up minus one, so how do we adjust for the second eye? Now let's look at this case. You can see the patient is very myopic, about minus 10 with two diopters of astigmatism in this right eye. And you can see the topography is not perfectly regular. Left eye, minus five with one and a half of sill, and again, a little asymmetry in the topography. So, hmm, interesting. Now, I'll give you a little hint here. The right eye has had the contact lens out for eight months. And therefore, that's basically the baseline. And I'll tell you in advance, this minus 10 is a lot of myopic shift. So if you look at the patient's records from many years ago, he had a similar refractive error in both eyes, had about a minus five of myopia with about one and a half to two of minus cylinder in both eyes. And interestingly, in the old records, before there were cataracts, the patient could be corrected in glasses to 20-25 vision in both eyes. And that's maybe because it's slightly irregular there in the center. So this eye has had the, has had the contact in as early as the day of the testing. So this is not going to be quite as accurate. Let's look at some of the other measurements here. Here's the tomography. Now on the tomography here, let's do left eye and right eye. Let's go to the right eye first. So the right eye is the one we're going to operate on first. And this right eye, here it is. Let's set that up. There we go. The right eye here, you can see again, a little asymmetry here in the, in the curvature. If we look here to the top versus the bottom. So certainly not something I'd want to do LASIK on. You can see this in the posterior float, this one spot here. And the cornea is a little thinner than normal. He's never had any prior corneal refractive surgery or anything else. And this shows here about two diopters of astigmatism of total astigmatism at about 91. And it's reasonably symmetric in the center, in the pupillary zone. That's the one, this again, right eye is the one we're going to operate on. Contact has been out for eight months. <clears throat> Left eye. Contact was in very recently, just the day of testing. And it was a hard contact lens. And you can see here again, a little bit more asymmetry as well. And again, you see a little bit of a central, thinner part of the cornea. Let's look at the calculation. So here's the bi biometry. So biometry is not too different in each eye. Not too bad. A little bit thin on the corneas. Both eyes have a similar degree of astigmatism, maybe a little more on the right. So things are pretty consistent. Remember, this is just anterior curvature. Everything else looks pretty clean. We look at the calculations here. Let's look at the right eye, because that's the one we're going to operate on. And so this right eye, the patient wants an extended depth of focus lens. So here, what would you choose for this patient? If you look here at Barrett formulas, you'd probably choose 13 or 13 and a half. Hill, the same, holiday, but third, so all pretty consistent, right? Now, obviously we don't use SRKT because remember, the K means avoid it if the K is unusual. And this patient, again, has Ks that are as high as almost 40, 49, 48.6 there. So we wanna avoid the SRKT in this eye. We look at the lattice super formula here, and what do we get? About 13.5, so I think that's a reasonable option here. So we'll make our surgical game plan. And there's the surgical game plan. We're gonna put in a 13.5. It is a toric um, extended up the focus lens with two diopters of correction at the corneal plane. That's the alignment. All looks pretty good. But let me show you then, what did we actually put in the eye? Well, the patient had surgery. And that's the lens, so we did the surgery. And how did the patient end up? The patient ended up a minus one myope. Why? Now, an eye like this, it's, a, it's understandable that calcs are gonna be a little different. When you have these steep corneas that you see here, when you have a little bit longer axial length, a little bit on the long side there, and so high degree of astigmatism, a little bit irregularity in the cornea, that's okay. So how do we calculate now for the second eye? So at minus one, with a centered up the focus lens, he's very happy in the first eye. So now the question is, what do we do for the second eye? Let me show you. So again, now let's review. This is post-op. He's been six weeks post-op now on the right eye. Now you can see even a little more asymmetry than before. That may account for some of the irregularity there in the center and maybe some of the refractive outcome. Again, has an extended up the focus lens, which can sometimes confuse the auto refractor. So the over refractor, auto refractor here 
At a larger 4.93 pupil, it's about a minus one. And that's what he is subjectively. Minus one gets him to a very happy 20 out of 25 vision in this right eye, which is pseudophagic. So he's happy and he has fantastic near vision, etc. The left eye now, the contact has been out for six full weeks. And you can see now it's measuring out a little bit less astigmatism, about a diopter's worth, kind of still with the rule here, steep here. And let's take a look at some more measurements. Here's the left eye. Now, this is the one that's going to be coming up that we're going to do surgery on. Still a little asymmetry here in the central cornea. And it's pretty steep. Look at that one dot spot down here, 49.9. And you read, and this is giving 1.28 of astigmatisms at 83. So if we look at the repeat biometry from today and the calculations, this is on the calculations for his left eye, maybe a 14 when you look at Barrett, 14 Hill, 13 half to 14 Holiday. We're gonna, we're gonna avoid the SRKT. We look here at Hill, 13, so what would you put? Maybe a 13 and a half, right? Well, that's not taking into account the first eye's healing. So assuming he's going to heal the same way in this first eye as the second eye, we can look here. This is the actual result. He had a 13.5 lens, and remember he ended up at minus one. So I basically honed or changed the A constant to give that outcome. So now with an, an effective A constant of 117, because remember, A constant varies with the Iowa power one to one. And so if I calculate the right eye with an A constant of 117 and I put in a 13.5, he ends up minus one. And that's exactly what we have. That's the actual result. So now I'll apply the 117 to the other eye. And now look at the calculations here. Now it says, hmm, 12 and a half or 13 should be the ideal lens power. So what do you want? He really wants the distance vision. And with this EDOF lens for the second eye, I'm inclined to choose the 12.5. And so now looking here, there we go. That's what we planned out here. Left eye is going to be that toric version of the extended up the Vogue's lens. And we're going to do about 12.5. And I'll let you know how it goes. Now, you may ask about intraoperative aberrometry. Also a good option, but that's really not the issue here. And remember, there's a lot of change that happens afterwards. This patient on post-op day one was pretty close to a plano refraction, but ended up shifting as he healed up.